Okay, so welcome everyone and today we are going to be painting some birds eggs and making some nests. So to start off, I have got these little mini eggs and I couldn't find any that were pre-made, like that were already painted and I really like the size of these ones. So just to show you, uh, you can transform these to suit your decor. So I'm going to start by adding a toothpick to the bottom, like so. That just makes a really good place to hold your egg. And then I'm going to be using these two paints, Warm White and Spa Blue. And this is like a robin's egg blue, and this is just a really nice creamy color. So I am going to go in and paint one of each color, and then we will go from there. So once you've got your eggs painted, I've got this little pot and I have a piece of floral foam in there. Just stick your toothpick right into the foam and then that makes a perfect place to dry your eggs. Okay, we're gonna let these dry. Okay, the eggs are dry. And now what I'm gonna do is go in and I'm gonna be using raw umber and I'm gonna just add a little bit to a plate. Uh, that's probably too much, <laughs> but that's okay. And then I'm gonna dilute it with some water. I'm just gonna add a bit of water to my plate here. And okay, so this brush is actually a really stiff bristled brush. And what I want to do is create spatter marks. So I'm just taking my finger and just pulling back on the bristles like this. And I'm going to create little splatters. You can see here on my plate. So that's what we're going to do on the eggs. Now, if you're not sure about doing that, not having very good control, you can take the end of your paintbrush, dab it in the paint and go onto your egg and just add little brown dots all over it like that. But I like the um, organic look of the spattered paint. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that and then we'll come back. Okay, so I've done that. I'm going to go in and create some bigger dots with my paintbrush. And then you're gonna let that dry. So I have some just inexpensive white glue. And I'm gonna put some in this container that I have. I have some water here and a stir stick and I'm just gonna add the glue to this container here um, I'm just gonna kind of eyeball it um, there's like no exact um, you know science to this so that's probably approximately a tablespoon and then I'm gonna add some water and I just gonna add a little bit at a time so that's probably about a teaspoon and I'm gonna start to mix it in and you want to kind of get like a little runnier than pancake mix so I still want to add a little bit more water I don't want it to be too thick because I don't want my glue to end up showing in big globs. So I'm just kind of going for a thick runny consistency as you can see here. So that should be good. 
Might add just a tiny bit more water. You could always add more glue if you need to. Here we go, that looks good. So you can see that it's coating my stick nicely, but yet it's running off. Okay, so I'm gonna set that aside for now. I have some Spanish moss and a little bit of raffia here. And please remember to use your craft mat because this will get messy. So I'm gonna just get some Spanish moss out here. Okay, so as you can see, it's quite, <laughs> quite messy. So it's also dusty. If you wanna do this outside, that would be actually probably a really great idea too. I have my Spanish moss and I'm gonna just kind of stretch it out a bit, pull it apart so there's no like big clumps for now. I have my raffia and it just depends on how much you want. If you want, you could also go outside and just snip some grass. So I'm just gonna take my raffia and scrunch it up like this. And that'll just kind of help to break it up and also to give it a bit more um, wild look. So I'm gonna pull some strands apart like so. And I'm just going to kind of incorporate it in with my Spanish moss. So just like a regular bird's nest has some grass in it, that's kind of the look that we're going for. So now I'm just going to um, kind of ball it up into a kind of a nest shape. It's not gonna hold its form completely at this point. You can see that here, you just kind of manipulate it a bit and move it around. All right, I'm gonna put my moss into my glue and this is gonna get messy. So if you wanna use gloves by all means, I am somebody who likes to just get right in there and get messy, so. You may need to go in once in a while and add some more glue mixture. Yeah, I don't have quite enough here. So I'm gonna make some more. I have an extra container on to the, off to the side here and I'm just gonna put my ball of moss there. And I'm gonna make some more of my glue mixture with the water. Okay, so as you can see, I'm just kind of pulling my moss ball apart, going in there, adding some more glue to it. And then I'm just gonna work it into my moss. And this is when you can kind of start to mold it so it can take its shape. So I'm gonna do that right now. Okay, so at this point, I'm gonna just add a little bit more raffia. I have a little bit more off to the side. I'm just gonna add that in and it will stick. Don't have to worry about that because there's quite a bit of glue and water here. Um, I just wanted a little bit more showing, so I'm gonna just add that to the top section like so. All right, I'm gonna set that aside and I'm gonna clean my craft area up and then I'll come back and show you the next step look at my hands <laughs> okay so I've got my mess cleaned up and I'm gonna take my nest out of the my holding container and what I am going to do now is add some branches now you don't have to do this step you could just leave your nest in its container and allow it to dry uh, but I really like the look of the branches in a nest. So I'm just gonna break some off and I am going to kind of work them into the moss while it is wet because then the glue will adhere to your stick, branch, <laughs> whatever you wanna say and then it will hold that stick in place. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now and add some branches throughout. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so I have my branches in place. And as you can see, there's quite a bit of a mess here as the glue and the water are draining out. So I just have some paper towel here. If you find that it's pooling up too much, just go in and clean it up and then you can just go back and let it just sit and dry. You could use the container uh, like so and let the glue drip as well. I want my nest to kind of be more spread out. So I'm just gonna leave it dry like this for now. And then as we go along, I am going to be flipping it over. It's really, really loose right now because everything is so heavily saturated. But trust me, like once this glue starts to set, then it'll definitely start to hold its shape. So I'm gonna let this uh, start to set. And then partway through, I'm gonna flip it over. If you have a place where there's a little bit of a ventilation, put it near that because the air flow from that will help this to dry faster. After a little while, like I said, I'm gonna flip this over. I tend to use a container because then it just helps to hold its shape. And then I will show you what I do next. Just so you know, it is gonna take a little while to dry as there it's saturated with water and glue. Yeah, it'll it it's not gonna like <sighs> dry in five minutes. It's gonna probably take a full day to fully dry and cure and set. So I'm gonna leave this alone for now and we will come back to it. So just another little tip for you. My craft room's down in the basement and I have vents like heating vents that blow down from the ceiling. So I am actually going to put this underneath that vent and that air is gonna blow on this, helping it to dry faster. You could use a blow dryer. I don't know if I would have it on like high heat, uh, but that will help to set it faster as well. And then I sometimes also take something like this and put it directly over an upper vent but I won't do that until it has stopped dripping glue because I don't want glue all over my vent. So there's just a few tips to help you get these to cure a little faster. Okay, so this is all dry and it actually only took a few hours because once it was um, solidified a bit, I ended up putting it over one of my heat registers and it dried fast then because the air was pushing through it. It worked really, really well. So if you don't have those options, then just set it aside and let it dry. It'll probably take overnight. Um, and remember just to flip it over because the liquid does pool up on the bottom. And so, yeah, this is the one that I made with you all and this is one that I made before see the difference I should have added a bit more moss there but that is okay because I'm gonna do something else I wanted to sh let, show you that if you want you could glue some twigs in after uh, I like to add my twigs in while I'm working with everything with the moss being with the in the glue. Um, I just prefer that because I didn't want globs of hot glue showing and weighing it down and taking away from its natural appeal. But I'm gonna go ahead and add a few just to show you what that looks like. Okay, so you can see how I glued them in and it works just fine. But as you can see, there is a little bit of a glob of glue there. Um, so yeah, you have that option to add the branches in after. I just really liked how they were 
naturally embedded into the moss as I was creating it. I personally think it just gives, gives it a bit more of a natural appeal. So another option is to add another colored moss. So I've got this preserved reindeer moss and I'm gonna add just little bits here and there and then I will show you the difference. Okay, so you could see that I ended up using the moss to fill in some of the holes that I had. Again, this is just optional. Uh, you don't have to do that step with the reindeer moss. The reason why I didn't mix the reindeer moss in with the rest of the moss is because I didn't want everything to be tinted green. Uh, it might have been fine. This is one of those things you can just play around and experiment and come up with your own technique. All right, now I will show you what it all looks like with some eggs. 